So just to bring everybody up to speed, everybody will know who everybody is. This is James Gall, our good friend. He's the president of God Encounter Ministries, if you're trying to find him on the web. He travels around many nations. I've stood on many platforms in the world with him. He has written more than 40 books. He's left me in the dust. And uh, including The Seer, Lost Art of Intercession, uh, The Feeler, which I wrote the forward. That is such a groundbreaking book. And its newest one, yeah, there it is. Tell your heart to sing again. You want to show that one? There was a feeling. Sure. What about tell your heart? This his handsome face is on this one. Yeah, we're going to focus on this one. Yeah, this we is are. An amazing book. We are. And of course, he's a grandfather. And uh, but he has almost died four times. And if anybody can say, tell your heart to sing again, he can do it. He lost his wife to cancer. He has fought cancer. He is still here. Even recently, we had to wait to interview him because he was going through another battle. But we're so thankful he is here today and he is alive. We're thankful you're alive, James. Yeah. And uh, just share with us, how do you discover hope? That's a subtitle for your book. Oh, yes. On this, uh, this book, Tell Your Heart to Sing Again, now, this is a different type of book than what I'm known for, because I really try to do, one, depth of scriptural grounding. I, a lot of my books have like 200 to 300 scripture references. I do research so that it's uh, have a, a depth of church and Jewish church history. And then the third chord strand is then contemporary experiences in the Holy Spirit today. But this is more of a narrative. I get transparent and a little raw, but not too raw. <laughs> I open with a scripture, I close with a prayer, but I take you on a journey mm -hmm. and I give you a life lesson a real important life lesson, like how do you catch the little foxes that spoil the vine? Or how about this one, that with every memory, there's actually a stored emotion and that there are triggers that we each have and you don't always know what they are and they might touch something and then you go, oh, and it might touch a trauma. Now, and what are you going to do with it? And I've had to learn, oh boy, how to deal with these issues because it's the healing of the heart and it deals with hope. And I'm just going to do this one little part of teaching. You know, in Ephesians, I know you know this, Mike and Cindy, it's called the helmet of salvation. But in Second Thessalonians chapter five, verse eight, the commentary is, it's the helmet of hope of salvation. Mm. Wow. Fascinating, isn't it? Wow. So we don't just put on the helmet of salvation, we put on the helmet of hope of salvation. And hope is the positive expectation of good. So when we put on the full armor of God, we've got to put on hope on our thinking, because as we think, so are we. And we, in these days, not only are we going through the test of fear to face down the test, the fears, and we must be giants of faith to face down the fear, but even in a sense more than that, there's giants of hopelessness, yeah. and we have got to tell our heart and our mind hope in god and believe me i have a lot of experience yeah in telling my soul hope in god yeah yes this isn't a self-help program this is reach into god because god <laughs> is for you yes he yeah. is yeah you know yeah i mean i know you've You've encountered a lot of pain and things, oh, and but it's yeah. very interesting because your book is entitled "Tell Your Heart to Sing Again," and I was just studying about singing, and you yes. probably know all this that singing is an antidepressant. 
And yes. singing, actually, they say it's healing people with Parkinson's disease, uh, you know, all kinds of neurological stuff. Yeah. It releases chemicals. It releases into your brain. endorphins. It releases into endorphins. Yeah. Feeling good stuff. You know, isn't God amazing? You know, he says, yes. now you worship me, but I'm really healing you. You know, yes. I mean, you know, it's so good. That multicast. Pra praise and worship. It's of the God. Mm -hmm. but you know, one of the greatest therapies that I do is my prayer. Get, get my praise on. Mm -hmm. And one of and so I've been singing and recording music, but I've done it by the word of the Lord. And the Lord told me over five years ago, the word of the Lord came to me and said, I want you to record music. And I go, okay, well, I've sung all my life. But he said, not worship music. And I go, huh? Wait, what? You know who you, I said, you know who you're talking to? Is that anti-prophet? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, wait a second. He says, I want you to record music the world knows. And I go, okay. And I want you to sing songs of hope in a time that the world will have no hope to build mm. a bridge to with songs that the world knows to sing songs of hope, to build a bridge of hope. And then you will build an with an audience that doesn't know the God of hope. And you will be able to introduce an audience that doesn't even know you or me by singing songs the world knows. So that's why I've been doing this amazing new journey. Yeah. where I recorded Never Alone, and now I'm releasing real soon Christmas Wonderland. And oh, my <laughs> gosh. We love Christmas so songs. I mean, we can play them all oh. the whole year round. <laughs> I know. Now, James, well, I, want to talk, I want to talk, or I want you to talk a bit about the timeline of all this, because how long ago did God have you write the book about Tell Your Heart to, to uh, Sing Again? How, how long I ago actually, was that? Yes, thank you. I actually originally wrote this in a class and everything, and it was more um, with a different title. And uh, and then, but about how many years know, ago? How, oh, it was more like seven or so years ago. And then okay, the so then so and then the Holy Spirit showed me the first time I did it, I did it for myself. I didn't know it. And it was a tool that was being used for me. And and then he then I got more healing. And then he says, now I want you to redo it. And in the narrative, I tell about how he commissioned me to sing again. And then in the process, I had already been recorded by Never Alone CD professionally well done with you know top producers and everything so then I was able to go back in and I professionally filmed the class and everything and then it came out in this version which is then updated and everything so I started it like seven or eight years ago okay. and then I added material because you know what the first time I did it I didn't know it I did it actually as a part of my journey and now i've done it because comfort others with the comfort you have been comforted mm. with by 